What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, we're gonna look at the new release of Django 4.0. All right, guys, like I said in this video, we're gonna look at the new version of Django. But before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships on my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap and going up soon. So take advantage of that now. Okay, like I said in this video, we're gonna look at the new version of Django. It came out yesterday, so I thought we'd take just a few minutes to take a real quick look at it because, hey, this is a Django playlist. And what do you do with your project if a new version of Django comes out? What do you, you know, do you upgrade? Do you not upgrade? How do you figure it out? We're going to look at it all in this video. So I just went to Google and typed in Django 4.0 release notes. And this website came up. This is the Django documentation. This is just docs.djangoproject.com forward slash en forward slash 4.0 forward slash releases forward slash 4.0. So you could just search for Google for that. You don't have to, you know, memorize this. So the first question is, how in the world did I know there was a new release of Django? Well, I'm on all kinds of coding mailing lists and Python mailing lists. And of course, you know, I heard about it several different ways. That's just what you kind of do. If you're using a specific programming language or framework, you're going to want to be involved in the community as much as you can. Get on mailing lists, you know, subscribe to newsletters, join Facebook groups, all that sort of thing. And then when things like this happen, you're going to hear about it as long as you're actively watching all those things and reading the newsletters as they come out every day and all that good stuff. So, you know, we sort of knew this was coming and it came out, looks like December 7th, which was yesterday. Today is December 8th. Today's my dad's birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> uh, so here we go. These are the release notes. And this is sort of always what I do when something new comes out. And it's not just Django, Python, Flask, any sort of framework or programming language that you're working with, they're always releasing new things. It drives me crazy because I am an old fuddy-duddy. I like the old things. We learn the old things. We know the new, the old things. It takes us a long time to learn the old things. Once we get them mastered, boom, they pop out a new thing. It's completely different. It drives me crazy. I understand why, you know, you always want your things evolving and getting better, but uh, we got to learn something new. But no, this is actually kind of fun. So what I always do is you know, they always have a web page, whether it's Django or any other programming language or framework or whatever tool, something, anything you use, they usually always have some sort of release notes and you can go read them. So what I always do is I just come to these pages and just give them a quick glance through. And you can see there's a lot of stuff here. So this is a major version update. We went from version 3. whatever to version 4.0. So anytime any programming language or framework or tool or anything updates to a new number, so you could be at 3.1.6, 3.2.4, 3.3.9, you know, those are just minor updates. We don't really care about those usually. It's these major ones from three to four, from four to five, right? From five to six. Those are the ones we really care about. Those are major releases and they shove a whole bunch of stuff into those every time. And these are the ones you want to keep an eye on. So what I'll do is I'll just come to this page and read. So. I will do two things here. I will read this entire thing eventually, right? The first time I look at it, I'm not just going to read through it. I'm just going to kind of glance, right? So I'll read the first paragraph, right? To see what main thing they want to tell me, right? And in this one, you know, there, it doesn't hit us with anything major. Django 4.0 supports Python 3.8, 3.9, 3.10. These are the latest versions of Python right now. We're on version 3.10. I still haven't upgraded to 3.10. I'm still knocking around somewhere in 3.8 or maybe even 3.7. So that's one thing I'm going to keep an eye on, right? Do I have to update my Python? Because I might even be on 3.7. In fact, if we come over to a terminal and just type in Python dash V, okay, now I'm on 3.9. So no problem there. I must have updated recently. I don't remember updating to 3.9. I must have for some reason. So I'm good there, right? So that's fine. And next, I'm going to look at a couple of main areas here. First, what's new? And, you know, I'll just, I'll usually read this right off the bat because I want to know what is specifically new, right? So you kind of read through all this and then knock out each of these. So script password hasher. I don't use that. I don't know what that is. I'm not going to read that the first time around, you know, eventually I'll go through and read all of this, but the first time around, I'm just going to glance and see what things affect me specifically. So write as cache backend. I don't use that. So templating based rendering. Oh, uh, maybe I'd read that. No, it doesn't seem like anything. Can Django contrib admin. We have admin areas in our websites. I would probably read this, right? 
So we look through here, nothing all that spectacular. Okay, I'll read it in more detail later, right? And this is what I do. I just glance through and sort of look at these things. Admin docs, I don't really use that. Contrib auth, we have some authorization, so I'll probably read this. Login view, that's sort of a class-based thing, I believe, so it doesn't really apply to us. Uh, this GIS, which we do not use. Postgres, yeah, I've used Postgres before, I'll probably read this, right? And I'm not gonna read this stuff to you, you can look at this stuff yourself. Static files, right? We almost always use static files, I'm gonna read this, right? Okay, cache, we don't use that. CSRF tokens, we, read, we use those. Remember, every time we have a form on our website, we need a CSRF token. Something's changed, I'll read that, right? So forms, and we've got forms, I'll probably read that, you know? And then this is just what I do. I kind of look through here, generic views. We're not using class-based views, so um, I, I probably wouldn't read that until later. Logging, same thing, management commands. Well, this is interesting, right? We have commands, we run the server, you know? Sometimes we check the, the database shell. I'll read this, right? And this is what I do. I just go through here like that. And I'm not gonna go into a deep dive of this, obviously, because it would take an hour and I haven't really had chance to really dive into this. I'm just telling you my process so that you can use the same if you think that it's a good process when these things come out. And not just Django, like I said, any programming language or tool. So test, I never do tests, so I'm gonna ignore that. Now here's some things that you're gonna wanna pay attention to. Backwards incompatible changes. So things that we used to do that may not work anymore. You're gonna wanna keep an eye on that, right? So GIS, we don't use that. It's dropping support for an old Postgres, it looks like. Keep an eye on that. Right, and on and on. Finally, we just come down to the end here where we just have miscellaneous stuff. I'm gonna probably read all of this the first time through. Not in great detail, I'm just gonna, you know, kind of scan it to see, oh, static URL, we use that all the time, I'll read that one. Admin site, I'd probably read that, right? Uh, some of these other ones, test, I'm not even gonna bother reading that one. You know, I don't do tests, so <laughs> right, I don't care. Eventually, I'll read all of this, like I'm saying, like I said, when I've got time, and I've got a good couple of hours, I'll dig into this. But right off the bat, the first time I look at this, I'm just sort of, you know, glancing at things. Now, another thing that's always very important that you really want to keep an eye on is features that are deprecated. And deprecated features generally mean they still work. They're just not really supported and updated in the future. Now, that is different than if we scroll down here, there's going to be features removed. You know, deprecated features usually will still work, sort of. You might run into trouble using them, but they're kind of still there. They're knocking around. If it used to work, it probably will still work. But in the future, you're gonna to wanna to start to pivot away from those types of things. Here, features removed, these are things that have just flat out been removed. So you're gonna to wanna to pay very close attention to that as well. Um, you know, back in version three, when we went from two to three, it changed how the static files and static DIRs in your settings.py file were you know, were used. So we had to redo all of that. So always pay close attention to both of these deprecated features and remove features. And usually with a remove feature, they have been talking about it for a while. They have sort of head faked like, hey, we're gonna remove this pretty soon. You know, some of these deprecated things up here will eventually make it down here and maybe version five or six. So if you're paying attention, you kind of know, oh, they've been kind of phasing that out for a while now and they finally dropped it, right? So pay attention to those types of things. And then boom, we're done. Now, if you want to look at past versions, you can see there's usually links to past versions. And you can see right here, version 4.0.1, you're like, wait a second, is there already a new one? No, not yet, but this will be, you know, the next one to come out. And it says here, expected January 4th. So around January 4th, you can keep an eye out if you're interested in that. I usually don't look at these little version updates, but I might for this one because it's the first one after a major update. So if people start using it and all of a sudden something weird happened, they're gonna fix it in 4.01 usually. So you're gonna wanna pay attention to that. So this all kind of begs the question, when do you update, when do you upgrade your version? I know, I wanna say most people are crazy. You're all crazy, I'll just tell you. You see a flashy new thing, you run out, I gotta have it, I gotta have it. And I disagree with that 100%. If there's a specific reason for you to upgrade, absolutely, go for it. If there's a new feature that you need, absolutely upgrade. If there's a new feature you kind of want, maybe don't necessarily need, 
Okay, think about upgrading. Besides that, there's almost no other reason. Sure, you want the latest, greatest thing, but a lot of times, if you're in a stable situation, you've got a website, it's been online for years, it's not broke, don't fix it. If it works perfectly fine the way it is, it's been up for a decade, you don't want to run out and update to the latest version. Things are going to break. Things aren't going to work. You might have to spend three or four or five or six months recoding all of this stuff to make it work on the new version. And what have you got to show for it? You're on the new version. yippity do. Was that worth six months of work? Probably not, right? So there's something to be said about, you know, slowly, you know, over time upgrading things because let's face it, if we're on Django 1.0, even if our website's working, it's probably not working as well as it could be by the time you're on version 4.0, right? So you, you definitely want to be cognizant of that. But at the same time, I don't think you need to run out immediately and just upgrade to the latest, greatest thing every time they drop these out. Because sometimes these come out every year, right? Or every six months or every year and a half. And if you've got a big, complicated website with, with a lot of man hours of coding involved, you can't just set a drop of a hat, upgrade everything, right? You just, it's just not feasible, especially for the very first version of a new major upgrade. So when we went from three to four, eh, you know, I'd wait a little while. I give a couple of these uh, 4.0 point things, you know, so maybe on 4.0.1, you maybe start to look, maybe upgrading 4.1.0. Six, you know, a few months go by, the kinks get worked out, but we make sure everything's working fine. You spend more time researching the new things and sort of weighing whether it's worth upgrading to get those new things, all that stuff, and you go from there. I absolutely never just run out and upgrade to the new thing. So uh, an example, Python 3.10 just came out recently, and I'm getting messages, dozens of messages every day saying, I, I've got 3.10 and you know, such and such doesn't work with it. Yeah, it just came out. That weird library that you use hasn't had time to update to work with 3.10. It worked with 3.9 just fine, right? So things will break if you upgrade too soon. So keep that in mind as well. So that's all I wanted to say on this. You know, I, I talked a whole lot, man, and I talked a lot longer than I thought I was going to, but this is just sort of my philosophy of when things update and upgrade, I don't run out really quickly. I spend, like I said, you know, a half an hour just glancing through, sort of seeing, you know, okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. I'll make a note of this. I'll make a note of that. And then when I have a good, you know, couple of hours, I'll really dig in here and read about all of these things. So if you want to use this delete view, you know, you click on it, you really get into it, click the thing, go to the documentation, you know, get into it. Yeah, I would definitely do that. But the first time through, I just glance and see what things directly impact me. If I'm going to upgrade, if I'm not going to upgrade, you know, especially since I teach this stuff, students are going to want to start, you know, using the latest version. And as people watch my videos, they're going to do the latest version. Does the latest version work with the videos I've already released? Sometimes they don't. So I have to go back and upgrade videos and things or create new videos that say, hey, there's a new version. Now do it this way. But you know, obviously that's not something you have to worry about, but sort of it is because if you've got a website, it's sort of like having old videos. They work a certain way and you may have to update them or upgrade them, or you may not, depending on what you're reading these notes. So that's all I want to talk about in this video. Always fun when a new version comes out. Very exciting times. And uh, that's sort of my process that I go through when something like this happens. And it works for me. I've been doing this 30 years or whatever. And if I just ran out and updated and upgraded to the latest crazy thing every time something happened, that's all I'd be doing all the time. And I don't want to do that all the time. I want to write code and, you know, build things. So I don't know. That's just how I do it. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. So pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Doing over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.